two, main engine start, one, zero, and lift off. Hey folks, my name is Jonathan Pryor and I'm an electrical engineer at NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. I'm currently enrolled in a class at the University of Huntsville in Alabama, which requires me to make a video related to computer engineering. So what I've done is I've taken the opportunity uh, to record some people at work talking about projects they're working on, uh, projects they worked on in the past, and also uh, give some advice to students currently enrolled in electrical or computer engineering program. So first we're going to talk to Brent B. Bout, and he's been my team lead since 2009 and he's had over 30 years of experience uh, working in imagery optics, digital electronics, um, software, um, all kinds of topics. So uh, let's go ahead and head into the lab and talk to Brent. Basically what I'm working on this this box here is a RTD signal conditioner and what we have on our program is a structural health and status kind of monitoring where we're looking at temperatures of the various both electronics boxes and just basic structure. What this box is is it takes the RTD or which is a res, uh, resistance thermal device platinum RTD uh, 100 ohms and converts that to just an analog uh, 0 to 5 volt output. I'm Brent Bebout. I'm uh, the uh, team lead for the imaging team within the uh, sensors, optics, and imaging branch, uh, which is ES-31 at Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, I've been employed by NASA for about 33 years now. Um, been in a variety of different uh, positions uh, over, the, you know, over my tenure here from uh, mission operations during the first space lab missions to uh, doing uh, research and development on optical disk systems and high-speed fiber optic devices in the 80s. Um, through working with Flight Computers Group on the design and troubleshooting uh, and just uh, implementing various flight computer programs to uh, uh, finally uh, diffractive optics which led to the imaging team. Uh, my background is in electrical engineering uh, and also have a degree in optics. Uh, so the imaging team provides a, com a good combination of using both expertise and um, so far, I really enjoy it. Uh, I'm a lab rat. I prefer actually being in the lab than setting meetings most of the time. Unfortunately, that's uh, one of the things necessary to coordinate and work with other people is you do have to uh, set in meetings some of the time and do the coordination activities. But uh, anyway, the lab part's fun too. This is for a uh, sounding rocket program, Chroma. Lyman Alpha Spectropolymeter. Um, it's a joint project between NASA and uh, National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. Um, and uh, it's pretty interesting. Sounding rockets are good programs to get hands-on experience uh, with a broad spectrum of system-related issues, not just a niche that typically we do within the team of cameras and imaging systems only. Uh, I got to learn a bit about RTDs and so conditioning because of this. Uh, simply because it's a small project, you can't really afford to matrix a lot of stuff out to other organizations because of the associated overhead. Um, and so it provides a good learning too for, uh, for learning other disciplines besides the one just for our team. I would say take a broad background of courses from communications, you know, assuming you're talking electrical engineering, from communications, digital design, anything related to controls theory, analog design, uh, even a few uh, EMAG courses, uh, because having a good broad background, even if you end up doing a have, working in a particular niche, allows you to interface with other people and other disciplines and see the overall systems aspect instead of just your own design knot hole that you work from. Uh, because sometimes that's, it's, you have to work between systems and that's key to developing an overall system is understanding where other people are coming from and, uh, and their disciplines. And so um, I don't, wouldn't necessarily recommend a particular line of courses, but keep your background broad for a uh, bachelor's degree in particular and you can specialize when you get into your master's and doctorate degree. I'm Paul Joino. I uh, work for Jacobs Engineering in the ESSSA group. 
I believe that's the correct terminology, and I'm a senior engineer, and I work in, in ES31 here at NASA. I, I, um, when I was probably 15 years old, I uh, bought a Heath kit, which is kind of a put-it-together-yourself electronics type of kit. I don't know if they're even around anymore, but at the time they were very big, and they allowed you to build uh, various types of electronic devices. You could build anything from an oscilloscope all the way down to a battery charger. Um, and I think my first Heath kit was a was a preamplifier and amplifier for my uh, stereo system. And that was a lot of fun. You get to figure out what a resistor is, what a capacitor is, and how they're different, how they work. It was a lot, it was a lot of fun. Right now, I'm working on the Filmers Group with the Filmers Group, which is a flight imaging, launch monitoring, real-time system. And basically, that's putting cameras on the space launch system vehicle at various locations. We have a total of about eight, a total of eight cameras, six on the outside and two internal that'll be monitoring, uh, for example, stage separation, booster separation, and, and overall vehicle health and status. And right now, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm inputting into my compressor board a, a test signal with a GPS timestamp overlay, and this is just kind of a regular picture of the, of the lab. It's over here, it's kind of static looking. And um, I'm trying to work out my scripting uh, language so that I uh, can execute the timeline that I'm that we're required to, to uh, perform. Um, other things I've worked on before, I've been working on this one now, I guess, several years now. The whole project has been going, and we're finally into our uh, testing of our qualification units. That that's very cool, knowing that something that you built actually gets launched and then even more successfully it worked. <laughs> That's always great. <laughs> if it doesn't work then, then there's problems but that one worked pretty well and um, was pretty well received by the uh, uh, community of people that had to look at and analyze that video. My name is Dennis Smith. Uh, I've been working here since March of 1980 but the first three years I co-opted from 1980 to May of 1983 where I hired on full-time. My degree is from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Technically, as a Bachelor of Science in Engineering, but has a electronics and computer engineering focus. Uh, back then, we took uh, programming on card readers, and so that's the uh, type of programming I got. But I also did graduate work at Auburn in the early 90s, and I was a course or two short of a software engineering master's. Um, uh, my job title out here, it used to be a aerospace engineer, I think it's changed to an electronics engineer, but basically I've done electronics design and testing and uh, system integration for the last 34 years, I guess, or, uh, or all, all, my, all my engineering life. Uh, I started working instruments uh, scientific instruments with the old Space Sciences Laboratory and specifically doing uh, ion detectors uh, and space plasma and it kind of is funny because I've turned full circle and I'm also doing the, the almost the same type instrument with a lot newer technology now. What I do daily out here at NASA is I work with the Minor Graphics schematic capture, desi schematic capture design software where I input the schematics in. I also use the Minographics printed wiring board layout and uh, after the schematic is in we lay out the printed wiring board. I also do the ordering of the printed wiring boards and then when they come in uh, we usually build up the red boards or the first version of the prototypes as we call them and then we start checking them out and uh, some of them have microcontrollers on them, on them, on them and we turn them over to our software people and they uh, they blow the magic smoke in them and then we see if they work. Um, the other part of my, my job involves the testing and, and like right now I'm waiting to go over to a, a vacuum chamber that has a plasma source set up in it to, to test a, a, an ion instrument that we're, we're working on. But also back in the lab we have a, a complete setup for uh, all of our prototypes of what we're working on for the microgravity sciences glove box. So we'll, we've tested the elements of that, but uh, 
the individual elements have been tested, so soon we'll start into the integration of all the elements into a, 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 the structure for system testing. If I had to give advice to a young engineer, I would say get as much hands-on work as you can do, whatever it takes to get in the lab and actually do things, because the more things you do, the more things you'll learn. Basically, when you're, you get your engineering degree, that's what you have. You, it takes a while to become an engineer, and what it, what it takes to become an engineer is to get in the lab and screw up some stuff, and then fix it. And so that's how you become an engineer, is you go do stuff, and uh, you figure out what you did wrong, and you do it better the next time. So I guess for a young engineer, get as much experience in the lab doing things as you can.